humans lose about 200 million skin cells every single hour. This is a picture of the skin cells that you may found on your bed. Since we lose so many skin cells every single hour, but why we don't look like this? All thanks to cell divisions. Cell division is a process which a parent cell divides into two daughter cells. This is why it helps us to repair those kind of damaged cells, but it also replaces those kind of dead cells. So we have two kinds of cell division. The first one is mitosis. The second one is meiosis. In mitosis, let's say we have a parent cell that consists of 46 chromosomes. The two end is indicate that it's a diploid cell, which we discuss later on. No worry about that one. So the parent cell after undergoes mitosis, it will divide into two identical daughter cells, where both of the daughter cells consist the same number of chromosomes as their parent. So that's why we say is identical daughter cells. In the other hand, for meiosis, it's very important in produce those kind of gametes like sperm and ovum. So let's say we have the parent cell same, we have 46 chromosome, but in meiosis, if we undergo cell division for two times. So after the meiosis, it will actually produce four daughter cells. But these daughter cells are actually non-identical. And as we can see here, the number of chromosome is only half as compared to their parent cell. So where does mitosis and meiosis occur? So mitosis occur in the somatic cell. Somatic cell is basically your body cells, means all of the body are actually composed of somatic cells except sperm and ovum. Some of the examples are like fat, epithelials, red blood cells, nerve, skin, as well as muscles. If you forget, you can think of ferns. In the other hand, for meiosis, it eventually is a very important process for us to produce sperm and ovum, which we call as a gamete. So basically, without them, we can eventually reproduce. So now we know somatic cell and reproductive cells are the example of the organism cells. But if you look deeper into somatic cells, the chromosome in somatic cells come in a pair. But then for reproductive cells, the chromosome only come in a single set. For the one come in a pair, we say it is diploid cells, which consists of two sets of chromosomes. One from the father, we call it as a paternal chromosome. One from the mother, we call it as a maternal chromosome. Why is it comes in the pair? It's due to, you can, you can imagine that, this one will actually decide your eyes color. So don't forget, you are the product of your father and mother, but not only one of them. So whenever they decide to give birth to you, they will think of like, hmm, what kind of color should you have? So eventually, your daddy will eventually have a secret recipe for manufacturers the eye color, maybe for blue colors. Meanwhile, your mother will also have a secret recipe to making the color of your eyes become brown. So what they're going to do is they're going to sit down together and decide which one you should have. So this is why we have a pair of chromosomes. This is why we call it a diploid cell. In the other hand, for reproductive cells, we call it as a haploid cell because it only consists one set of chromosome. This is very important when we want to pass down to our next generations, we only pass down a single set. You can think of like, if I want to give my children something, I will give the one that is the best. So this is why reproductive cells only consist of one set of chromosome, what we call as a haploid. Or you can think of like, the sperm cell and ovum are very excited to fuse together, so they are very happy. So happy haploid cell. Or you can look deeper into the number of chromosomes. You can think of like now we have four people, boy A, boy C, girl B and girl D. Let's say boy A and girl B fall in love and they want to give birth to a children. So if without meiosis, they will pass down all the chromosomes to the next generations. So now the children boy E will eventually have four sets of chromosomes. Two from the father, two from the mother. 
let's say boy C and girl D or the same thing, give birth to a children without meiosis. But what if now boy E and girl F also fall in love with each other, and now they give birth to a children where they pass down all the chromosomes that they have. So now, even worse, girl G has a set of chromosome. So you will imagine that this will actually build up very fast with the multiplication of 2 power of n. As we can see here, in the first generation, we have 46 chromosomes. The next one is actually 92. And the next one is going to be 184 chromosomes. Number of chromosomes decide who are you. 46 might be a human. 50 chromosomes might be a potato. Who knows, right? So this is why meiosis is very important. So let's imagine this is a scenario where we have meiosis. It means that before we're going to give birth to a children, we're going to undergo meiosis to produce a sperm and ovum cell. So meiosis eventually produce the daughter cell that has only half the number of chromosome. So instead of 46, the sperm only consists 23, the ovum only consists of 23. So whenever they fuse together to form the zygote, this is why if we go back to 46 number of chromosome. This is how we maintain the diploid number for the humans. Same goes to boy E and girl F. When they decide to give birth to a children, boy E will eventually also produce sperm by meiosis, which half the number of cells. Same goes for girl F. And when they fuse together again, they will go back to the 46 chromosome. This is how it maintains the diploid number of chromosome in the next generations. So basically, you can think of like the formation of zygote is where we have one father and one mother. Both of them have the diploid cell. They eventually have the chromosome from their father and mother, which is your grandpa and grandma. But whenever they decide to have children, they need to produce their sperm cell and the ovum cell by meiosis. But meiosis will eventually help us to reduce the number of chromosomes to become half. This is why they only contain the best one that they're going to choose. Let's say the sperm will carry the best one from the father, the ovum cell will carry the best one from the mother. So this is why we call it as a haploid cell because they are very happy, they are very excited to fuse together. Whenever they fuse together and bam, we now go back to the diploid cell which is 46 number of chromosomes. This is how we maintain the diploid number of chromosomes in the next generation so that we won't become the potato by having 50 chromosomes. And the last, before we finish, we're going to learn what are the importance of mitosis and meiosis. For me, mitosis will drag us, D-R-A-G-S, or you can think of it like G-R-A-D-E, where it helps us to replace those kind of dead cells they repair the damaged cells and it's a very important process in asexual reproduction where the cloning process occur where they can regenerate themselves or without their partner or without finding a couple so since cloning is generate the new organism is identical this is why the daughter cell is same number of chromosomes and last one also, they support growth for the embryo or any living cells. So this is why you are so tall or even taller than your parents. All thanks to mitosis. But then, for meiosis, they are very important to produce gamete, which eventually produce the genetic variations. This is why you look more handsome or more pretty than your friends. This is why you and your friends look differently. And remember that it only produce half the number of chromosomes as compared to their parent cell because we only pick the one that is the best carried by our sperm or ovum cell. This is to ensure that the diaproid number of chromosomes can be maintained in the next generations. So now we're going to look into two main process in cell division which is called karyokinesis and cytokinesis. Karyo means the nucleus of the cell and kinesis, you can think of like this is the kinetic energy where we can move around without any directions. So karyokinesis means the division of nucleus. Cyto means cytoplasms. So it means the division of cytoplasms. Now we can imagine we have a cell that contains nucleus. Whenever it undergo karyokinesis, the nucleus will start to divide into two nucleus. But then in karyokinesis, the two nucleus is still inside one 
cell where we have the cleavage flow which we discuss more in the future video meanwhile for cytokinesis this is where the cell is being separated completely so karyokinesis happens during the M phase which is before cytokinesis meanwhile for cytokinesis it happens during the end of the M phase which is after karyokinesis we will discuss more about the cell cycle in the next few videos but for now remember the sequence is kc keep it cool karyokinesis come first then only cytokinesis hey if you want to join my online tuition class please drop me a message on telegrams or if you want to support us so that we can make more videos like this the simplest way is just to sharing the video with your friends hit the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel See you in the next video.